Good day ladies and gentlemen, my name is Cole Simonson and today we are working on knock tuning for elk hunting arrow. So we're going to get right into it on the basics of knock tuning and how and why we do it. Knock tuning is pretty much just adjusting your knock and twisting it so it aligns with the spine of the arrow. So you get the most consistent and the best flight pat flight you can get. Uh, it's a little step, but it's also a step that is often overlooked and it can make a good difference, uh, especially when tuning your arrows. Uh, first things first though, before you start your knock tuning, always remember have your center, uh, center shot checked and your power stroke checked. Make sure everything's uh, perfectly tuned on your bow. You can always take that down to a pro shop and they'll do that for you. Your center shot is very important because that is your left and right on your rest and your up and down. So you want that uh, as close to center as possible. Manufacturers will uh, give you a tolerance left to right on where it should be and you want to try to stay within that or else you're going to have problems at longer ranges. So anyways, after you have those done, what you're going to do is you're going to take this arrow and shoot it through paper. Now we already cut and trimmed this arrow to a length that was where I guessed would be close to where I needed to cut it based on uh, past knowledge. And so from there, what we ended up doing was we cut it 28 inches, shot it through paper and we adjusted from there. Now, you're going to have multiple rips through paper. There are some that are bullet holes such as these and that means you're ready to go back another couple yards and shoot again. Then there are some like these that are completely torn and such as these. Uh, first things first when you're shooting through paper is paper will show you every single form error you have. So you want to make sure your forms as close to perfect on every shot as you can get. This will make it a lot easier on yourself uh, when it comes to tuning these arrows and making sure your bow's in tune. That being said, if you feel like the shot was not perfect, pull it, mark that uh, tear so you don't mistake it for another one and reshoot. If you get the same tear two to three times, then most likely it is a problem with your arrow, rest, and or your power stroke on the bow. So how do we adjust these tears? Well, there's a couple ways and I'm going to go through them, but it just mainly depends on the bow you have and how in depth you want to adjust it. If you have yokes on your bow, bow you will twist a yoke uh, to fix a tear. And if you get too many twists in it though, you'll notice your cam will be leaning really hard one way or another. And that's where you want to go back um, and start looking at your arrow length or your center shot. Make sure that's correct. You can also shim the bow, which is also very difficult. You will need a bow press for both of those methods and uh, shimming the bow is pretty much just moving the cam over to correct for the tear on that. Once again, if it's too far over, you'll want to start looking at your arrow length and your center shot on your rest. <clears throat> now, there's some bows like mine to where it's extremely difficult to change the shims, so we rely a lot on the spine of the arrow and the center shot. Now, when it comes to adjusting your rest, you don't want to go far, too far left or too far right. You'll have problems down range. You might get a bullet hole at a couple yards, but the farther you move back, the worse it'll get. It'll start tearing again. So here's what I did to correct for all these tears that I have on this piece of paper. Now the tears I was getting were hard left tears. 
this means a couple things. One, my uh, center shot is off on my bow, and so I would need to move the rest a little bit one way or another to correct for that tear. Um, I could also shim my bow, but like I said, requires a bow press and is a very difficult way of doing it. So what I opted for is I stayed within my center shot and I decided to trim down the arrow to stiffen the spine. Now from traditional shooters, you will know that a weak spine tears left and a stiff spine tears right. So I went because I was consistently getting tears hard left and could not uh, fix it with a rest adjustment and I didn't want to shim, I decided to cut down my arrow to stiffen that spine, which helped drastically. And then I was able to tweak my form a little bit and then twist the knock to get a perfect bullet hole out to 15 yards. So that is about the the time you want to start cutting these arrows is when you have no other chance or choices left. Um, just be careful when you're cutting. It will be quarter inch to eighth inch sections at a time. And when you really are getting down to the nitty gritty where you're just correcting for a small tear here, or a small tear to the left, then you will want to go to like a 1 16th off of that arrow. Very little changes a lot on these arrows. So after you finally get where you want at a couple yards, you'll shoot this a couple times through a couple yards and get your bullet hole, which is a perfect diameter of an arrow through the paper, no tears left or right. You'll step back another couple yards, shoot it again, and make sure you have a bullet, bullet hole there. If it starts tearing again, check your rest, move it a little bit at a time, a little bit goes a long way, and try it again, and continuously move back. And if you did this right, you should be able to shoot a bullet hole at 15 to 20 yards, as long as your form is consistent. If it is consistently tearing one way or another, up or down, that's when you will want to go with another adjustment. That is how I found that this arrow was under spined, was I was getting bullet holes out to 10 yards or so. Well, after that, I went back to 15 and it was a hard left tear consistently all the time. I adjusted my rest, I adjusted my knocking point, everything I could adjust, I did, and then I finally trimmed the arrow down and when I did trim it down, it corrected for those errors at 20 yards. Came up, shot at close distance, had a bullet hole, worked my way back again, and had a bullet hole all the way out to 15 and 20 yards. So lastly, we're gonna co cover a couple of tears here just to make sure we all fully comprehend what they mean and what to do. If your arrow is going straight in and the rip looks like it's going left, that's gonna be a underspined arrow you will either move up a spine or down a spine to something like such as a 300 to a 250 or you'll cut the arrow. If it, you start cutting it too short, then you definitely want to move down to a stiffer spine. Hard right tear is an overspined arrow. Those are where you have two, your arrows too stiff, so you go up to the next spine level from a 250 to a 300 because you can't add on arrow. You can add on uh, weight though to the front, which will also change uh, your spine. It'll make it a little bit weaker. If you take weight off the front, it'll make it a little bit stiffer. So, and then we're going to go with a hard up tear and a low tear. With a down tear, you'll want to adjust your rest or your knocking point. But with a high tear, it kicking up like that, 
you're going to want to look at your spine again, especially for compound bow shooters. Um, you'll, if you're severely underspined, your arrow is going to kick left and you'll notice it. Especially if your rest and your power stroke on the bow are correct, then most likely if it's a weak spine, it's going to tear high. So that is another indication of a weak spine. Um, especially if it's left and high, then it's definitely a weak spine um, as long as your rest and everything is correct. So that's the basics. Um, if it's a little bit confusing, please comment below and I will personally talk with you and try to make it as simple and easy to understand. I will add a couple links in the description about tears uh, from a couple very well good sites that I even use to correct for my tears. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and just comment. And if you want to even subscribe, it's getting into hunting season. So I'm going to have more hunting videos out. Um, this is the boring stuff of getting ready to hunt. So I know it's a little bit uh, dull and long but we're getting into the action of the year now and i hope you guys stick around to join us so thanks again i'm cole simonson and you guys have an awesome day and good luck this season